They're getting ready to take out the garbage with Biden. I, I think they'll probably kill him, or he'll die in his sleep, or he'll have fall a, down some stairs, fall down some stairs, or, or, or be dr- you know drugged or whatever, or, or at least be in a coma very soon. And I've got very high level sources uh, that are they're, you got people dug in the Democratic Party. Roger Stone's totally dialed in. He was on my show yesterday, and he said they're crazy enough that they're thinking this is what Democrats are saying right now. Okay, Big Mike, Michelle Obama, and. Uh, and then VP Newsom or Newsom. Conservatives are trying to cope with the damning charges and evidence surrounding Donald Trump, and they've reached the point of tossing out conspiracy theories about a Democratic shakeup to get people's minds off of it. And even though Alex Jones seems to have been relegated to a locker room to speak from, no one should forget what he said about his conspiracies when he was legally held responsible for them in that deposition. And I've, you know, I myself have you know, almost had like a form of psychosis back in the past where I basically thought everything was staged. You know, I've now learned a lot of times things aren't staged. So, um, you know, I think as, as a pundit and someone giving opinion um, that, you know, my opinions have been wrong, but they were never wrong consciously to hurt people. I'm just saying that the trauma of the media and the corporations lying so much, then everything begins, you don't trust anything anymore. Okay. Kind of like a child whose parents lie to them over and over again, well, pretty soon they don't know what, what, what reality is. So, so, so long before these lawsuits, I said that in the past, I thought everything was a conspiracy, and I would kind of get into that mass group think of the communities that were out there saying that, so now I see that it's more in the middle. So even though Alex Jones continues to skirt his legal responsibilities to grieving families he smeared for cash, some people still take him seriously, like Ted Cruz, who's trying to keep up with the Alex Joneses. Here's the scenario that I think is perhaps most likely and most dangerous. In August of 2024, the Democrat kingmakers jettison Joe Biden and parachute in Michelle Obama. I view this as a very serious danger. I'm smiling right now because it terrifies me, and I also could totally see this happening. So Michelle Obama, number one, you don't infuriate African-American women, which is a critical part of the constituency that Democrats are relying on to win. But number two... You avoid the problem. If you pick from any of the four, the other three are pissed. Barack Obama is already running the Biden administration. I think he is already the puppet master behind this Biden White House. I don't think Joe Biden is the decision maker. And so when I see the media turning on Joe Biden right now, I think the odds of Michelle Obama parachuting in in August of 2024 have risen dramatically and that ought to scare the hell out of anyone who, who is unhappy about the direction this country is going and doesn't want us to go even crazier in an even worse direction. Ted Cruz learned from Trump that actually doing his job as a senator doesn't cultivate MAGA's constant hunger to be fed scary stories of boogeymen. So we hit the necessary trifecta there. There's a very serious danger. You know those angry black women are ready to pounce. And Barack Obama's pulling strings because he's still president. So for anyone that thought we've made it past our worst nightmare of a black guy running the country, get your pitchforks back out of the basement because he's doing it again. But still, even though these guys think the same old playbook of scaring their voters with the Obamas will actually work, they still have to address California Governor Gavin Newsom, who actually does look like he's a guy who's positioning himself for a future run. But still, Trish Reagan here can't get a mind off of their favorite target in Michelle Obama. He's been running for president forever. This is absolutely in his orbit, in his aspirations. Um, And you know what? I think he would be, in some ways, if he didn't have the California legacy behind him, a pretty formidable candidate, right? Because he's young, he's good looking, he kind of checks all those boxes. The other problem for him is, well, just think about this. If all of a sudden Gavin Newsom comes in out of nowhere and takes it away from Kamala Harris, who's sort of the anointed one, right? She's black, (laughs) she's female. So she checks certain boxes. I know nobody likes her. I mean, just look at her polling back in New Hampshire. It is a train wreck. Like she's got no shot in H-E-double-L of getting anywhere. The Democrats know that, which is why Mr. Newsom is waiting in the wings. But now people are talking about a third Uh, player, Chris. And that third player is someone who would be black, would be female, maybe would help abate some of the negativity if they were to give it to somebody other than Kamala Harris, and that is Michelle Obama.